Hello and welcome to this second video on data science for finance using Python and Go. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can download the open, high, low, closed volume data for an individual stock and for stocks in the S&P 100 using the IEX API. So to get started, you're going to want to open up a Jupyter environment. And that's going to bring you to a screen that looks something like this. So go to a folder where you want to save this uh, tutorial and click on New Notebook Python 3. And that's going to open up a new notebook environment for you to work in. So, I told you we're going to down download the stock information for individual stocks in the S&P 100. And the way that I used to do this before I learned programming was I'd go to Yahoo Finance, I'd go to historical data, I'd specify some date range, say three months, and then hit apply, and then download data. That's fine if you're doing it for maybe a few companies, but when you're trying to download data for the S&P 500, or any other index, that's gonna take forever to do. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can quickly download that. So let's jump in. The first thing we're gonna do is import our library. So from date time, import date time. And we're gonna use this to set a beginning and an ending date on the stock information that we're gonna download. We're also gonna import pandas as data and this is going to be where we store our, our data in a data frame or a panel if we have multiple stocks and then finally we're going to import pandas data reader dot data as web and this is what is this is what's going to actually allow us to access that iex api and download the stock information Hit shift enter and exit. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is specify a start and end date. So for this tutorial, I'm going to I'm just going to look at the month of February 2018. So you give it the 2019 as the first argument, two for February as the second argument, and one for the day and month as Third argument. And the end date is going to be of February. Hit enter there. Right. So let's say you want to download the open, high, low, close data for the SP. The way that you're going to do that is create a, a variable. OHLC is what I'm going to name it. You can name this whatever you want. And I'm going to set it equal to. And this is where we're going to use the data reader. So we're going to call on web.datareader. And we're going to have to give it a few arguments. The first argument that we're going to give it will be the ticker. So in this case, it's SPY. The second argument we're going to give it is IEX, which is the API that we're going to use. Now, if you're not familiar with IEX, it's the Investors Exchange. It was featured in Michael Lewis's book, Flash Boys. But it's just one of the APIs that Pandas Data Reader allows you to access. Um, I found it to be pretty reliable. Uh, you can also access information from Yahoo Finance, Morningstar, Robinhood, so on and so forth. But this is the one that I found the best for me. So that's the second argument. The third argument will be the start date. And finally, the last argument will be the end date. Hit enter, and there you go. Information is downloaded. And now you can preview it by clicking OHLC. Pricing information for the S&P 500. But you don't want just one stock. You want to download, if you want to download the data for the S&P 100 companies, you can do S&P 500, you can do the Russell 1000, it's up to you. But if you want to download the S&P 100, um, I have this Excel file that has all of the stock tickers and company names in it. 
And you can find this file along with the Jupyter Notebook on my GitHub, which I'll post the link down below. The first thing we're going to do is read this file, or we're going to just put in the string of the file. And it's going to be a raw string. That's what that R stands for here. Because there is a backslash, pandas would think it's an escape character instead of just a string. So we want to mess like that up. Next, we're going to create a variable called SCP-1 company. And this is where we're actually going to feed the Excel file into our Jupyter name and so if we wanted to preview that we can see okay it looks the same exact as the Excel so what we're gonna do is we're actually only gonna take the stock column simple not stock and that just gives us that column and then we're gonna take the we're gonna call dot values to just pull it out and put it into and I'm going to save that to SP100 tickers. So now that we want, now that we have the ticker information that we're going to feed into the Pandas data here, we're going to have to run it through a for loop. So for stock SP100 tickers, and let's just print that to see what it. So it's giving us the each stock, and it's doing running through each time, giving us the stock. So it looks like it's giving us exactly what we want. So now we're going to create a variable called OHLC, and we're going to do the same thing we did before with the data. So in this case, the first argument is going to be stock. The second argument will be IEX once again. The start date. So this is going to save it to OHLC, but every time we loop through a stock, it's going to overwrite that OHLC variable. So what I'm going to do is create OHLC dict, which is going to be a dictionary type, and we use curly braces to indicate that. And I'm going to store each. So with a dictionary, you have a key and you have a value. So the key that I'm going to use in this case will be the stock ticker. And the value is just going to be that data. And now we're ready to download. So hit shift enter and wait for the data to download. All right, so now we have the open, high, low, close volume data for all the SP 100 companies saved in this OHLC dict. So, the great thing about Jupyter Notebooks is you can just type in a variable and see what it gives you back. So, as you can see, it's stored as a dictionary type. And you can see in this first example, the key here is Apple. Colon, and then the data frame is the value. And then we have the next ticker, DPD, with the data frame. So if you wanted to access an individual stock, like you wanted to access Google, you would just put it in these brackets and specify the value. So the next thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use something called a, pan, a panel, which comes from the pandas data frame. And that's going to allow us to store this data in a three-dimensional object. panel PD, and then you're just going to wrap that OHLC dict in this panel. So now we have a file, or now we have a variable that is a Pandas panel, and it looks like this when you just look at the variable. So you can see it's a three-dimensional object. Uh, the first dimension, 102 items. I guess there's 102 tickers that I downloaded. 
The second is 19, so that's the number of rows that we have in our data, which we have 19 days worth of data for February. And finally, we have five columns in our data. So that would be our open, high, low, close volume column. And if you wanted to access the stock pricing information, it would just be the same thing as now I converted this into a panel so that we could save the file to our disk. Um, if, you, if you are doing research, you don't want to have to download the data every time you go into your Jupyter Notebook. So I like to save it, and I'll save it as a pickle file. Two dash one dash nineteen two dash twenty eight. And now that file should be saved in your folder. See, well, I've done a few tutorials and now I'm stopped recording, but you can see that I have it saved there. So the next time you want to read it, you would do you can create any variable name, it doesn't have to be OHL stuff. Like stock prices. And then you'll do pandas.read pickle. And then you're just going to give it that file name. And there you have it. You have the pandas panel with all of the pricing information from February of 2019. And as you can see, this is tremendously useful. If you are doing a lot of data analysis and you want to look at a bunch of different stuff to compare to each other for whatever purposes you want, this is just the foundation of downloading that data. It's a lot faster than going into Yahoo Finance, typing in the ticker onto the page to download data, and then typing in the next ticker, going to the next page, you can download data. So this can be tremendously helpful in saving your time. And this code will be available on GitHub, which I'm going to share down below. It's going to have the S&P 100 tickers. So if you want to go through this whole tutorial and try it out yourself, I highly recommend it. Um, if you found this video useful, please like this video, share it with anyone if this is something they're interested in, and of course, subscribe to my channel. So until next time, 